Hello everybody, welcome back to some more Pokemon Sun and Moon coverage. This is not how I talk, why am I talking like this? Anyway, so Coral Coral League today, so I'm going to be covering that. Plus I'm going to be covering stuff in the lat, in the video that came out on the on Monday, which had some th really fucking huge news in it. And I'll be covering all of that. If you're wondering why I didn't cover it on Monday, I was on vacation, so I couldn't. And I just noticed that Rowlet's Japanese name is Mukuro. Which is way too close to Murkrow for comfort. And you can see Murkrow fucking litten. By the way, there were leaks, but there was a leak of the entire Pokedex allegedly. But it's not true. What? Anyway, Poplio's here. I guess I zoomed this in too much. Give me a second. There you go, much better. Rock rough. Yeah, we've seen all this. Okay, first piece of news we're covering. Young Goose evolves into gum shoes, and it is looking way too much like Trump. Fuck, okay, how do I move this? I die. Okay, I can't. So, I'm gonna read this to you. It's a bit blurry, so. Gumshoe's method. Fucking hell. Mm -hmm. Gumshoe's method of targeting prey is the exact opposite of Young Goose's strategy. While Young Goose prowls around, Gumshoe stakes out its prey's usual routes and waits patiently for it to come by, so it's very strategic that way. Gumshoes has a tenacious personality, which is why it targets one prey for so long without wavering. But when the sun goes down, it runs low on stamina, falling asleep right right on the spot. Gumshoes can withstand a great deal of hunger. It's per able to stay perfectly still while waiting for its prey, keeping watch without eating a thing. So I really like Trump over here. He's nice. Anyway, we got some Pokemon we've already seen. We got Drampa. We've already seen that. We got that. We got that. We got Solanded. Oh, wait. What? This thing. What is that oh hey it's the pre-evolution to beware nuiko guma i'm just gonna call him uh winnie the pooh for now so winnie the pooh over here is the struggle pokemon yeah that's all we have we just have an image anyway mimikyu's here we got wimpaw we got bounce we got bunsu we got comfy we got mudbray we got fucking mudsdale we got minior minior right Oh, wait, no, these are new. These are new. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, this is a pre evolution to Mudsdale post Pokemon I'll definitely be using on my team, and it's called Mudbray. Mudbray could once be found all over the world, but it was overhunted and ended up on the verge of extinction. They said that the Alola Ridge is the only place in the world where Mudbray can still be found in the wild. Mudbray boasts superhuman strength. A surprise, considering a small body. Mudbray can carry loads up to 50 times its own weight on its back or dragging behind it. Oh my god. And this thing's 242.5 pounds. Think about that shit. <laughs> Mudbray loves playing in the mud. It's easy to live in harmony with this Pokemon, as long as you provide an environment where it can play in the mud. If it, if it can't frolic in the mud... I think that's mud. It looks like Mike. Mud, however, Mudbray will become stressed and may stop listening to orders. Anyway, somehow this donkey evolved. Anyway, somehow donkey. Holy shit! That was an epic voice crack. <laughs> voice crack. <laughs> so I don't know how this fucking shrecky, shrek looking ass donkey evolved into this epic looking ass fucking Big Mac piece of shit over here. But we also have Minior. It's kind of terrifying. Anyway, Minior formed in the stratosphere and live by absorbing the oh, fucking odetrius around them. When they when they've consumed a large quantity of particles, their bodies become heavy, and they fall towards the and they fall toward the planet's surface. Minior is a hard and heavy outer shell with a hood inside of it. <laughs> The meteor Pokemon seems to be made in such a way that if its shell breaks, it becomes lighter. It can deal with quick attacks. As you can clearly see by form number one and form number two. Look at how cute that little star is. It looks like fucking Staffy. If its shell breaks, the core, be the, the core in its center is revealed. You won't know what color it will appear until this happens. Oh, so it has different colors. It's probably just going to be fucking red the whole time, but whatever. Minior's core will change color depending on the particular color of the debris it has absorbed. Its pastel coloration has a cute look. This Pokemon is often used as a design motif for clothing and accessories. Anyway, the next Pokemon we have is another Pokemon. I might be using a, I was looking for a fifth member, right? And I think I found it. 
Fomantis. Fomantis, which evolves into one of my personal favorite design Pokemon, Lurantis. Now, this is actually one of my favorite designs because it looks a lot like a praying mantis. Now, no, you have had praying mantis Pokemon in the past, but this one is more like the um, flower mantis, which is designed to look like a flower instead of a stick. Anyway, let's read some fucking information on this fucking thing, shall we? That's the wrong way, okay. You did not see that. I, I accidentally pressed a button. And for that, I am sorry. But let's just get back to where we were, shall we? Here we go. Fomantis. Fomantis is nocturnal. Nocturnal. It performs photosynthesis while it sleeps during the day. By spreading out its leaves in all directions because of the day. By spreading out its leaves in all directions. Because of the danger of staying in the same location two days in a row, Fomantis begins to search for the next day's spot as soon as the sun sets. For Fomantis, photosynthesis is not just a source of energy, it is a necessity to achieve the strength and brilliant coloration of its evolved form. So does that mean it evolves through the sunstone? No one knows. Photosynthesis is a pressure to Fomantis, and it will fiercely attack those who get in the way of its process. Fomantis excels at using laundry, long range attacks like Glory's Leaf and Solar Beam. Solar Beam is a is indeed a powerful move, but since it uses up the energy that the Pokemon has stored through photosynthesis, Fomantis rarely uses it. So Fomantis is going to be a special attacking grass type. Interesting, which is weird because it's gets the, the fucking sickle grass Pokemon. Its ability isn't too good with, um, Leaf Guard. You can kind of read it. Anyway, next we have Lerantis, and I love this thing. Lorantis draws opponents near to itself with its flower-like appearance and aroma, and then takes them down. They see you know, said to be the most gorgeous of all grass type Pokemon. Fuck you. It's, fuck you. <laughs> Dude, it's brilliant coloration and elegant moves. Lorantis Lorantis's appearance is maintained through detailed grooming. It, it will trust a trainer who does a good job of caring for it, but will apparently have a difficult time growing closer to a lazy trainer. Lorantis is the totem Pokemon of Lush Jungle. Oh, they told you. The site of an Akala Island child. They totally spelled that wrong. It will overwhelm child goers with the, with the powerful combos and unleashes with the Pokemon allies it calls. Next we have Orikoro. Or I love this thing. So we have Balest. So as you can see, this is designed there. And you're like, oh, this is cool. This is a Spanish dancer. Fucking wrong. There's four of them, bitches. So we have the firefighting Ballet style. Ballet style, which appears to be based off of Spanish tango, I want to say. Electric, the electric flying type pom pom style, or Ricoro, which is um, cheerleading. Then we got Pao style, which is hula dancing, and Sensu style, which is a ghost flying type. And very obviously a fucking thing. 